Now, when it comes to security, even if you have changed the visibility to from everyone to role based, uh, what will happen is only people who have some role assigned on that supervisory org only they will be able to see the supervisory org. Others will not be able to see the supervisory org as well. Um, now, for you to control, uh, now for other, for the others, I'll tell you. I mean, even though she used an analogy where this she said Pfizer and Amazon which is a very rare scenario where you know you, you won't see two two entirely different companies in the same tenant like amazon and pfizer however there are companies there are organizations that use a federated model meaning uh, in one tenant there will be multiple organization structures that will have no relation with each other meaning this will have their own uh, own supervisory org structure like this. This will have its own supervisory org structure. Uh, they will have their own CEO. There will be their own CEO. There will be another own CEO. Uh, I have worked uh, for an NGO uh, in the past. Um, I have handled a project for the NGO that follows a similar model where um, each organization structure will have its own uh, will have its own uh, set of uh, uh, employees and own uh, supervisory org structure. Uh, now, what's your name? R Rita, you say Ria, Ria. So Ria, in this particular case, um, although you can handle uh, a lot of security and restrict what others can see and what others cannot see like you can say <clears throat> only manager will be able to see the details of the direct reports like the email id and whatever the information that you can control on the employees security policies you can add that however you cannot stop entirely from this manager to from accessing the information of this uh, these reports and when i say information it can be as simple as a name you can obstruct a lot of data like their uh, compensation data their job profile data so what they will see will be very uh, very basic information but you cannot fully obstruct so if they if they search for a name they are still going to see that okay there is some person uh, called xx if they search for john they will not see the list of john who are only part of the organization this organization they will also see johns who are in this organization and not johns who are in this organization however you can control the list the amount of information that is showed in this particular organization employee uh, when compared to employees from these organizations because here you can control it based on the role-based security policies on these two organizations you will not be able to control it uh, i mean you will not you will control it based on the roles so here since this manager has a role on this org, uh, he will be able to, or she will be able to access more data of that employee, well um, as compared to uh, employees from these orgs, where they will be not be able to uh, view any rules because uh, they are not the direct reports. Now you have to be careful when you are creating those security policies. When you are creating a manager security, you you can select constrained manager security policy, and based on that. Uh, you can uh, add the constraint that they should not be, uh, they should only be it only restricted to that particular supervisory org or supervisory org on subordinate orgs because two organizations they don't have any link between each other, so it will not fully, um, um, they won't be able to see the entire detail. You have to look at uh, worker worker data, worker data domain. Go to worker data domain is. Uh, and now this is how you have to do it like you can check view security for securable item and then search for a specific term uh, let's see let's say employee id you can go and check it will be in setup worker data or view worker data then based on that you have to see who has access to this particular data uh, like the employee id who has access who should not have access now you look at the people who have view and modify access and ensure that do they should they have access if they have access what kind of access it is is it a role based access or user based access now you should be aware that if it's a user based then it's a tenant wide access if it's a role based then it will be accessed constrained to a specific 
uh, organization. Now, this organization, if it's supervisory, then fine. It will it will be constrained to that particular supervisory. But if you are using uh, it constrained to a location uh, or a location hierarchy, now this particular location hierarchy, if it is used by multiple supervisory organizations, which are even not related to each other, however, they all use uh, the same locations and the same location hierarchy, they will have access. So you have to manage security in that way in order for you to constrain that specific access. Today, we are going to talk about the staffing models. So in Workday, we have two different staffing models. One is the position management. And the second staffing model is job management now whenever you create a supervisory organization you will have to determine which staffing model will that particular supervisory org will use okay um, i think by default most of the organizations uh, uh, based on what we have configured in the tenant it is going to go with position management however you can also edit and choose job management at the time of creating a supervisory org now let us see what exactly is a staffing model so staffing what what do you mean by staffing staffing is meaning when when you are once you create an organization have you plan on hiring the employees so what is the method by which you want to hire the employees if you are going to use a position management whenever once the supervisory organization is created and you would like to hire employees into that particular supervisory organization if you are using a position management staffing model what you have to do is uh, Workday will ask you to first create positions. So basically, they will ask you to create positions. And once a position is created, then you will have to hire an employee into that particular position. Okay, so that is how the position management staffing model works. First, you create the position and then you hire an employee into that position. Whereas in job management, if you would like to hire an employee, you will first go ahead and start hiring the employee. At the time of hiring, Workday will simultaneously start creating a position for that particular employee. So this is the primary difference between the position management and the job management. Now let us understand what exactly is a position. So a position is now, view this position as a chair. So let us, uh, I'm just going to draw a chair like this. Um, I hope that makes sense, okay? Suppose this is a chair. Now there will be a person who will be occupying this chair. So let's say this chair is of CEO. Now the person who will be sitting in this chair will be the CEO, okay? So the position of CEO is controlled from this particular chair. Basically, this is the position of the CEO. Any person who occupies this particular position will become the CEO. Let's say the CEO resigned. Maybe he got old and um, or she got old. Let's say the CEO uh, got uh, has resigned. Now this the position of CEO is vacant. So some other person. So let's say there are three people. There are three people, and right now there is uh, one CEO who is holding this particular position. Okay. So earlier it used to be in Amazon. It, the CEO of Amazon was Jeff Bezos, right? Now the CEO is somebody else. It's not Jeff Bezos. So CEO uh, Jeff Bezos retired as the CEO of Amazon and somebody else is now holding that position of CEO. So basically what you understand, so this person went here and he became the CEO. So basically what you understand from that, uh, 
a position is basically what defines a position i mean sorry a position is what defines this ceo it's not the person so any person who comes and sits in the or occupies that particular position will become the ceo of amazon is taking so it, it, everything is that that particular role of ceo is controlled by this particular position now when it comes to job management now this is a case of position management where you have to first create a position in workday and then you will hire the employee into that particular position so suppose you want to hire 20 employees into a supervisory org and that 20 employees um, and that particular supervisory org is using position management staffing model now what you have to first do is you'll have to create 20 positions in workday and once those 20 positions are created then you will have to hire 20 employees into those 20 positions okay so this is about the position management staffing model now when it comes to a job management staffing model what happens is if you have to hire 20 employees you can directly start hiring the employee let's say you want to hire for the position of uh, coo suppose you directly start hiring an employee you find that okay there is a person who is eligible to be uh, uh, working as a ceo of the company you would just directly go and start hiring the employee and work they will automatically create a position it will automatically create a position so now i'm going to use the same analogy of ceo in this case so i'll say this chair is now the chair position of ceo and there is Jeff Bezos sitting in this chair. We have three people over here who will be, who, who, one of these three people is going to be the next CEO. Now, when uh, Jeff Bezos retired as a CEO of Amazon, what will happen is, it is not just Jeff Bezos will be going, it is also the position will go along with the Jeff Bezos. So now there is no position, there is no position here because unlike position management in job management when when you are hiring an employee you will create the position will automatically get created so when the employee will leave that position that particular position will no longer be available it will not get like it will not be a vacant position like in position management because in position management when an employee leaves the position you have an option to close the position or you can leave it vacant for someone else to come and occupy that particular position whereas in job management when an employee leaves a particular position um, the position will also go away so now if this particular person is going to be appointed as a coo of amazon uh, you this person will be moved to this new supervisory org where the coo will be stationed and there are two ways either most in most cases this particular employee's existing position will be converted to the position of ceo I mean, basically, you will change the roles and responsibilities of this person, and that particular employee's position is going to be continue be used here. Okay, you'll just change the details, the roles and responsibilities of the position from COO to CEO. Okay, so that is how the position job management works, where you don't have to create a position; the position will be automatically created. Okay, so that is the very basic uh, explanation of the, of the difference between the position management and the job management. Now, let me also explain you the difference between uh, what is a job, uh, what is a position, and what is a job profile in Workday. Okay, now in Workday, whenever you are creating a position, you'll be coming across this, this specific uh, uh, requirement of a, entering a job profile. So in Workday, a job profile will determine or it will define the roles and responsibilities and uh, characteristics of a particular job. So let's say you have a job profile of manager. 
okay now what will be the roles and responsibilities of the manager roles and responsibilities skills certifications like okay, languages that they should know okay there can be a lot more details that can be tracked as a part of this job profile now for this particular job profile of a manager okay so there is a manager job profile and these are the roles and responsibilities and skills and certifications and languages and education etc 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 that is required for a particular job profile of manager now when you are creating a position you will have to select the job profile to be assigned on that particular position so let's suppose you are creating a position called xyz let's say xyz is a position number now when you are creating a position it will ask you to select a job profile if you select the manager job profile this particular position xyz will be a manager position because the roles and responsibilities of a position will be determined or will be defined by the job profile it is using on that particular position so a job profile will scale or a job profile will determine what is the roles and responsibilities uh, of that particular job and the position will uh, when you are creating a position the job profile defined on that position will determine what are the roles and responsibilities of the person who will be occupying that particular position is it clear so let's say there is this position p001 okay now in this particular position if you assign if you assign the job profile of ceo this position will be anyone who will occupy this particular position they will have the roles and responsibilities of ceo but if you remove the ceo and change this to let's say um uh, accountant this particular position anyone who will occupy this particular position will be having the roles and responsibilities of an accountant not the ceo so a job profile will define what should be the roles and responsibilities on the position not the, the position will automatically not define it you will create a position so position is like a chair so a position is like a chair the what should the person who we, who is going to occupy this particular chair so who will be sitting in this particular chair the person who is going to be occupying this chair what should be the roles and responsibilities of that person will be determined by the job profile the position is merely a, a chair for someone to come and occupy it so you in both the cases there will be a position the only difference will be is in position management you will have to first define the position you have to first create a position and once a position is created only then you can start hiring an employee into that particular position whereas in job management uh, you will create positions simultaneously so workday is going to handle the creation of position uh, you just have to provide the details of the uh, of the position or you just have to provide the job profile and it will automatically create a position you don't have to worry about creating a particular position now you might be thinking in both cases if we are going to use a position why do we even need a staffing model why do we need position management why can't we just go ahead and start using job management it sounds very easy because in both cases we are anyway going to create a position uh, so if the position is going to be there anyway why don't we go and always use uh, the job management staffing model it looks uh, way better um, uh, than the position management now i'll explain in what scenarios we will be using position management and in what scenarios we'll be using the uh job management staffing model so in position management when you are creating a position you have a lot of control um, or the organizations have a lot of control on the number of positions that are created and how many employees are being hired in that particular organization okay suppose uh, it's a big it company and every year there will be some budgets uh, allocated so let's say this um, this company has about a uh, thousand employees in that particular organization let's say there are thousand employees 
or maybe 10,000, okay? Let's take a big company. Um, let's take the Google, for example, or you can also take Amazon, for example. Yeah, maybe Amazon, we'll use Amazon because we have been using Amazon as a example. So in Amazon, suppose we have 10,000 employees in Amazon. Every year, every year, before every every before the start of the financial year every company will do a, a budget so this budget is basically going to define how many employees we basically have or basically it is the positions headcount it will do a headcount report so now this year we have 10000 employees <clears throat> And the current compensation of each employee is this, 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 this. So if we multiply 10,000 employees and if we add this compensation, the budget for this year is, let's say, um, if we have to pay the compensation for every employee based on the current uh, employment uh, and the current compensation, uh, it is going to be, let's say, um, about um, seven hundred million dollars or uh, nine hundred million dollars. I'm just giving a superficial value here. Okay, just for the employees. Uh, let's not take nine hundred million. Let's take maybe uh, uh, five hundred million. Okay, let's suppose five hundred million is required to pay the salary of all the ten thousand employees for that particular uh, year of 2024 to 2025. Now suppose Amazon is not doing very well. Every year, Amazon will also have a budget set aside based on the uh, current uh, previous year business and the next year projected uh, business and based on the roles or uh, based on the, uh, the direction the company is planning on going. So let's say the company is going to invest heavily on AI. And this is something that Google has done and a lot of companies have done. All companies are basically focusing heavily on the artificial intelligence aspect. So they are, they are deploying a lot of teams uh, specifically for AI to develop a lot of AI because they all want to be in the race. Okay, so because of that, what's happening is they might have to from these 10,000 positions, uh, they might have to create an additional 1,000 positions just for this AI roles so that you, they can hire employees for AI. Now, even when they are hiring these 1,000 employees, uh, 1,000 additional roles, maybe because AI, the, this is the latest technology and uh, the, the talent is scarce and it is difficult to fill these roles, whomsoever you are filling on these thousand uh, roles, uh, they will be pretty expensive to fill. So you have to pay them very high salaries in order for them to come and join and start working for you. So the company might uh, take uh, a decision saying that, okay, from the list of 10,000 positions, uh, we might have to lay off a thousand employees from this 10,000 and then create positions for this 10,000 so that we can balance our budget for this year. So we have an allocated budget of 500 million. So we need to get rid of thousand employees so that we can still keep the budget as same so that we are not going over budget. Okay, I'm just giving you some of the specifics that happen behind the scenes when they come up with these decisions. Now they, they have decided they are going to lay off these thousand employees. Okay, now when they do that, when they do take a decision like that, uh, if they are using a position management staffing model, what they will do is they will say, okay, now there are for these thousand positions, they have two options. One is, let us close these positions. So when they close this position, basically, if an employee is already occupying a position, they cannot close this position. So they will have to first terminate the employee. At the time of termination, Workday is going to ask, do you want to still keep this position? So if they say that, yes, I want to keep this position, that particular position is going to be left open or vacant. 
for someone else to come and occupy that position so either you are laying off thousand positions and keeping that thousand positions open meaning now there are thousand vacancies in your company which you can come and fill or if you are going to close those thousand positions at the time of termination basically you don't have any vacancies zero vacancies there were thousand positions you terminated thousand employees but those thousand positions were also closed so in position management basically what that means is you have a lot of control on the position you can control how many positions are being created so let's say um, every every company will have a cost center manager so every employee will be assigned to some cost center and there will be a cost center manager associated with that particular company whenever a request goes for creating a position so when you initiate a create position transaction the cost center manager will have to approve it and this is how most organizations who have a position management will uh, configure their system whenever you initiate a create position it will first go for an approval to the cost center manager because the cost center manager will have the budget for that particular year so the cost center manager will determine should i allow this particular position to be created or not if the if the if the request is denied the position will not be created and unless a position is created you will not be able to hire an employee into that position so basically you are controlling how much budget can be allocated for a particular year and how many positions are going to be hired in that particular fiscal year you will not be going more than the required number of positions you will basically be able to control the budget but it's not just the budget that you can control you can also control a lot of other details like when you are hiring a position where that particular position is going to be hired so the location of that position the location what type of employee is it a, a full time worker or if it's a part time worker <clears throat> if the um, if it's a, a an employee or a contractor or a contingent worker okay like this the location the the employee type uh, the worker type and a lot of other details uh, can be controlled when you are creating a position management and for each position you can control it so let's say in that 20 positions you want uh, five positions to be created in the us five positions in the uk and uh, 10 positions in india suppose you want it in this way now what will happen is when you create those five positions in the us you will only be able to hire these five employees only in the us so basically you are controlling the position by creating a restriction on the position and this is called as position restrictions now this is another feature um, of the staffing model in position management you can define the position restriction at position level meaning if you have 20 positions for each position you can define a position restriction like this so i can say that five of the positions should be from the location us so you are creating a restriction what restriction you are creating you are restricting the employees from only the us to be hired in those five positions so you will not be able to hire any other employee from a different position similarly if it is going to be uk five employees in uk meaning you can only hire the employee or a, a worker who will be working based out of uk you cannot hire an employee from let's say south africa into this particular position because this particular employee is not from south africa he should be from the uk in order for that employee to be hired in the uk similarly you can define if it's a full-time or a part-time let's say these 10 positions out of these 10 positions you say five of them are full-time and five of them are part-time you can only hire part-time employees in this position you cannot hire full-time employees in this position because we are defining the position restrictions at the position level even when you close or even when you let go of people in this position let's say there are uh, these are like i'm just going to put boxes so let's say these are chairs 
So again, I'm just going to draw five chairs like this. So these are the five positions, P1, P2, P3, P4, and P5, five positions. And we have five people who are occupying these positions, okay? We have five people occupying these positions. Now, when, let's say these two employees are now leaving the organization, now, when these employees leave the organization, you can choose to keep this position either open or you can choose to close this position or you can also choose to freeze this position. We will get back to what is a freeze position later. For now, understand, if you keep the position open, what does that mean? Now, this employee left the organization and you have another new employee who you hired. So let's say there is another new potential employee who is interested in this position. So this employee is leaving the position and this employee will now come and occupy that particular position. So in net rate, the position is still open. The position is still there as it is. It's just that the person who is occupying that particular position is changing. So initially it was some other person. That particular person is no longer occupying that position. Now a new person is going to occupy that particular position. However, if you if the, for this person, this person is leaving the organization, instead of keeping the position open, I choose to close this position. So this position will be closed, meaning there is no longer any position. There is no P2 position. This position is now in a closed state. Now, what is the benefit in having a new uh, an existing position open so that a new employee can uh, occupy that particular position it comes with it's called the position history basically so in position management you can retain the position history now basically if you are going to retain a position history, it, if, you, if you retain it, it will have the entire history starting from when this position was created. Who was the person who occupied that particular position? So who was assigned? Who is the incumbent of that particular position? When that particular person left the organization, who is the current holder of that particular position? okay you will have that entire history so if you have a very old position and you have people who come to that position who leave that position you can report on that particular history you can have as of this particular date who was holding this particular position who is holding the position currently when when was this position created you can report on all these details in position management now when it comes to job management you can still create position restrictions but it will not be on the position level it will be at the organization level you will create a single restriction at the organization level and all the positions that you hire on that particular uh, for that particular supervisory org all the employees will have to follow that particular hiring restriction that you have defined at the supervisory org so job management does not have a lot of control on the number of positions that are created now in what cases you will use the job management staffing model now taking the same analogy of amazon let's say okay so now this is amazon and in the in the year um uh, in, in the month around november okay starting uh, actually starting september october starting october what amazon will do is amazon will start hiring seasonal workers now can anyone say why do they want to hire a lot of seasonal workers in the month of october november december and january because we have a lot of festivals in this particular year in this particular time of the year we have um, <clears throat> we have easter we have christmas we have new year and a lot of festivals so during this time there will be a lot of orders on amazon basically a lot of gifting so amazon does not need a lot of employees uh, during this time of the year they need 
I mean, Amazon will need a lot of employees, uh, specifically during <clears throat> this time of the year. Uh, and after once the January is done, they don't want that specific employee because the orders will now come down. But especially during these four months, there will be a very high number of orders. So if there are more number of orders, there is a lot of work, especially related to uh, getting those orders managed, packing those orders, delivering the, there is a logistics involved. So basically they need a lot of workforce to manage this high volume of orders. Now in those kind of cases, they don't really know how many employees do they want to hire. Maybe they, they based on the current projection, uh, they might want to hire, let's say, uh, 500 employees, okay, based on the current projection. But in the month of November, they realized, uh, hey, uh, 500 is less. We might need an additional 300 employees. So total 800 employees they need to hire. Now, if they are going to use a position management staffing model, what will happen? They have to now create 300 additional positions uh, and then they have to hire those employees. So it will be a tedious task to, to keep track of number of positions that are created, to keep track of how many positions are now open, how many of them are closed. So instead of doing that, what they can do is they can opt for a job management staffing model. So if it is a job management staffing model, they don't have to really worry about creating these positions. They can, they can hire, today they have determined they just need 500 people. They hired 500 employees. Now in the month of November, they say they might need additional 300. They will hire easily additional 300 employees because in job management when you hire the employee the position will automatically be created for that particular employee so you will not have to worry about creating the positions now in this case you cannot control of that each position uh, this position should be full time or that position should be part time all of them will follow the same hiring restrictions basically the location of the employee, the uh, the worker type, if it's a full time or a part time, uh, if that employee is a, if it's an employee or if it's a contractor, okay, these kind of details will be defined at the supervisory organization level, not at the position level, because you don't have control on the type of positions that are going to be created. You can only define it at the top level, and all the employees will be hired will be following the same uh, restrictions defined for. The supervisory org so all the positions that gets automatically created will have the same restrictions defined on the supervisory org okay the benefit is you can grow or shrink as required so today after november in the month of december uh, amazon realized that hey we might only need now 200 employees so rest of the 700 employees can be uh, terminated they will lay off these 700 employees so they will just uh, terminate them they don't have to worry about creating positions closing positions or having to decide what to do with the positions because it doesn't matter but the the other caveat of having job management is you will once the person leaves the organization once the person leaves the organization the position history associated with the position that employee had at the time uh, this employee is working even the position history will be lost so you cannot retain the position history uh, once the employee leaves in uh, job management staffing model now how will you how, how are you going to advise the client what staffing model do they want to use if they have any such requirement high volume hiring these are the cases when they will use when you have to uh, basically um, advise a client to go with a, a job management staffing model however if he, if the client will need a lot of control on the positions they want to first they want to first approve the positions that are, that are being created before an employee is hired into that particular position. If they want that kind of a, a control on that, then you will have to advise the client for creating a supervisory or with position management staffing model. Now, another question that might that that might be asked, especially during the interviews, is let's say you have created a supervisory org and then you will hire employees into these 
uh, supervisory org. Let's say this is how the structure looks like. Okay. So this is all organization structure. So here you created a, a supervisory or you use position management. Now, when you create subordinates for this particular supervisory org, what will happen is it will automatically inherit the, the top orgs staffing model. So this will automatically be position management, position management, position management, position management, position management. If you use job management here, it will automatically be job management, job management, job management, job management, and job management. However, once you create a position, suppose after creating the position, this will automatically be position management. But you can edit this particular position and say this should be job management and uh, not position management you can edit the staffing model of that particular supervisory org that is possible in workday however if you are going to change the staffing model of the supervisory org you have to make sure this will happen before you hire an employee so there should not be anyone who is hired in that particular supervisory org after you create the supervisory org if you want to change the staffing model you have to decide that hey i am going to change the staffing model of that particular supervisory or before you even start hiring if you if you start if you hired one employee then you cannot change you are locked it will be locked you cannot change it unless before you hire the employee you, you can determine if this what is the staffing model on that particular position but once you have hired an employee you will not be able to change it so that's the only caveat so the final answer is yeah the position management or the job management staffing model it will follow the inheritance model however uh, you can change the staffing model of a subordinate organization provided there are no employees hired into that subordinate organization if you hire an employee then you will be stuck with the staffing model that was assigned um, on that particular uh, supervisory work at the time an employee is being hired is everything clear now we'll go into the demo if everything is conceptually clear we'll see all what we discussed in action uh, during the demo when you create a supervisory org you have the option to choose at the very first time so let's say when you created this supervisory org workday will ask you do you want a staffing model of position management or job management it will ask you however when you start creating subordinate talks it will automatically use the staffing model on the supervisory on the topmost supervisory org this supervisory org whatever is the staffing model it will automatically inherit so it will automatically inherit however let's say you created this particular supervisory org it will automatically inherit position management but you 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 determine that this particular supervisory org i want to use job management so you will edit this supervisory org staffing model and change it to job management however suppose when you created this it automatically defaulted to position management you went ahead and you hired an employee you created a position you hired an employee now you cannot change it it will not let you change because you can only change the staffing model on a position before you hire anyone on that particular even if you hired and then you terminated that employee on the same day even then it is not possible because you have hired that employee once or you have some history of an employee being hired you will not be able to change it it is going to stay as position management so whenever you create an org even though it inherits the uh, position uh, the staffing model of the uh, superior org you have an option to change it provided there are no employees hired into that particular supervisory org so you at the time of creation and you have to change it immediately uh, once an employee is hired you will not be able to change it before you hire after you hire you cannot i'll show you that in action uh, but for now just lock this concept in your mind that uh, you can only change the staffing model before you hire an employee into a supervisory org once you have a hire you won't be able to change it if you have a job management you hire an employee into a job management staffing model you cannot change it back to position management so basically 
once you have job management staffing model you will lose the ability to create positions in that particular supervisory or you cannot create positions positions will automatically get created for the employees so this is where you will determine if the staffing model is so now you can see all of them use basically the same staffing model however i can also edit the staffing model so if i go here and go into staffing and wait a second you can see in organizations edit staffing model so i can change the staffing model from position management to job management now let us go to one of these organizations where we already have employees so let's say i'm just going to open some random tom <coughs> so we have a lot of toms here i'm going to open this tom so you can see this is a supervisory org where this employee tom is hired if i go to the staffing here you can see that it is using job management staffing model okay now if i go to the related actions of this supervisory org and if i navigate to organization can you see do you have an option to change the staffing model there is no option because you already have an employee hired into this particular supervisory org so you won't be able to change the staffing model of that particular supervisory org so you can only change it before you hire anyone into that org once you have hired an employee you won't be able to change let us go to another tom maybe that tom is hired in organization so this is a different tom although the name is same you can see the supervisory org is this so if i go to this staffing model you will see okay now this particular staffing model is using position management staffing model let's see if i can edit the the position management so if i go to organizations here you see the option to edit the staffing model is not existing in this particular organization the reason is the there is an employee who has been hired into that particular supervisory org so once you have hired an employee you won't be able to change it you have to decide that before you decide to hire anyone into that org once that is done then there is no way you can go back to a different staffing model you have to create a new supervisory org entirely okay now let us create a position in workday so i'm going to i'm going to the topmost org and uh, for testing purpose i am going to be using mostly um, position management uh, for the most part i will create positions and then i will start hiring employees but one of these uh, supervisory orgs i will use a job management staffing model and i will show you how that works as well okay now let us suppose we have to create a position this is how you create a position there are two ways to create a position in workday now let's say you want to create a position in workday there are two ways to create it one is by let me duplicate this tab the first way is you can go to the related actions of the supervisory org now remember you can only create positions in position management so this particular option to create position will only be available if you are using the position management staffing model so you can you can navigate to the staffing option here and you can see there is a create position uh, option here so if you create select on create position it will give you this particular screen otherwise you can also go to the search bar and say create position so when you search for this task you will see there is a task called as create position you can click on this particular task and it will ask you to first enter the supervisory org to create that task if i say um amazon global is the supervisory org i want to use when i am creating this position i can click on this and it will again be the same as this one so you can see both the screens are same because here i have defined in both the cases you have to define which supervisory org in first case you directly went to the supervisory org and then you selected uh, create position from the supervisory org whereas uh, in this particular task here you first search for the task of create position and then you will select the supervisory org uh, where you want to create the position okay 
So you can do it either ways. Either you can do it from the org or you can search for the task and then select the org for, uh, from that particular task. Now this is a reason, uh, the, posi the create position reason. So what is the reason you are creating a position? Now there you might be seeing there are a lot, there are a ton of reasons created here and these reasons can be controlled. So I am going to say, I want to create a, a new position. So the reasons that you are seeing here, these are called as event categories and reasons. Now these are configurable. So whatever reasons you see here, these are not automatically delivered in Workday. These are configurable. This is where you configure it. Let me cancel this one. <clears throat> so basically I just duplicated the tab. I'm going to create our own reason code. And this is called as a reason code in Workday. So if I go to maintain event categories and reasons, you can basically configure your own reason code. So what we are doing, we are doing a create position. So just search for create position event. You will get the create position event. And when you click OK, you will see that there are about 72 event categories. Now, there are people who are using a lot of these events here, like the one that we just used, the, the one that was used was new position. So we were able to use the create position, hire, new position. You can see hire and new position was one of the reason that was there. There are a lot of other reasons here, but you can see most of them are now inactive. The reason being, I don't want them to use. So if I just go and start inactivating a lot of these reasons like this, suppose if I do that, what will happen is you will not see any of those reasons anymore. Like this, if I inactivate these, can directly inactivate it here. So I'm just directly inactivating the ones that I don't need to use. Okay, so let's say if I inactivate all these here like this, oh, it's a, that's a lot of reasons. I don't want to keep doing this activity only. Um, I'll just create my own one. So if I say um, AMZ create position, and I will say here in the reason AMZ, new hire i can say another one I, amz add head count so these are just categories of reasons that i want to use so i created a reason category called amz create position and i have provided three reason codes in this particular uh, reason category now if i go to this particular option here so i just create click ok and now it is created now here if i go and search you can see amz here so in create position if i search for amz I'll just select it as manager reason. So I just selected these manager reasons here, uh, probably because the 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 profile that I'm using is of manager. The the profile that is given to me, Ashley, that person is a manager. So let me see if it is now available here. So now you can see it is available. So AMZ create, I'm, I'll use one of the reasons that I use. So I'll just say new hire. Now, when you look at the history of that particular position, you can see that the reason code used for creating this position is AMZ new hire. So it basically drives the reason codes uh, when you are creating position. But other than that, there is, um, I mean, there is no other impacts to using the reason codes in Workday. It is basically to uh, deter, to, control or it is for um, what we say uh, we can define multiple reason codes and then you, it, it is it is good to use the correct reason code when you are doing a specific transaction so that when you go back 
and check the history, uh, you know what is the reason you did that particular transaction. So most companies will define a list of reason codes which you can use when you are creating a position or doing any other transaction. If a, if a reason code is used, uh, you can specifically understand, okay, this particular uh, activity or this particular transaction was done to do this particular task. So here in this case, I'm doing new hire as a task. So I have defined a reason code for that. The job posting title. So I'm going to create a title called as uh, Workday Consultant. So this will be the, uh, the title on the uh, position and how many positions I want to create. Let's say I want to create three positions in Workday. The next is the availability date and the earliest hire date. So the availability date is basically from which date this particular position should be available in Workday for hiring. So from which date you will be able to see this particular position in the supervisory org. If I select the availability date as let's say, um, if I select today's date as the availability date, this particular position will be seen in the supervisory org uh, by the manager starting 20th of March because I have selected 20th of March here. However, if I select 1st of April, until 1st of April, this particular positions, so I'm creating three positions, these three positions will not be available for hiring until the third or until the first of April. Now the earliest hire date. So you have the positions available. Uh, what is the earliest date you want to hire an employee? I can say I can start the position is available from first of April. I would also like to start hiring employee on first of April, meaning um, what should be the hire date of the employee? Can it be first of April? If you define the earliest hire date as 1st of April, you will be able to hire an employee as of 1st of April. Okay, so that is the difference between the earliest hire date and the availability date. Now what I did here, I changed the earliest hire date to 20th of March, but the availability date is on 1st of April. So what will happen? It will give you an error because you cannot hire an employee on 20th of March when the availability date is in the future. So it will not let you submit, it will give you an error. It says <clears throat> the earliest hire date cannot be before the availability date. So you have to have the availability date should be on or after the, sorry, the earliest hire date should be on or after the availability date. You can have the availability date as 20th. So you basically from 20th, you can start your hiring activities. Like you can, uh, if you are using recruitment, you can post these jobs on the job portal and then you can start attracting applications. And uh, you can, the earliest, uh, so the date of hire should be 1st of April or it can be 2nd of April or 1st of March, but the earliest hire date. So it cannot be before, it cannot be, if I say uh, 1st of April is the hire date, I will not be able to hire an employee on 31st of March because it will not allow that. Because 1st of April is the earliest hire date. Now for the sake of convenience, I'm going to be using 20th of March as the earliest hire date because I would also like to hire an employee into this um, supervisory orgs. So I have created three positions and whatever you see in asterisk is the only detail that you need to enter. So I can potentially just create this position with these three details. Um, now you see job restrictions. If you want to create, if you want to add any restrictions to the positions that you're creating, like we discussed, right? Position restrictions. If you want to create those restrictions, you can, you can add those values. So these are the restrictions like what is the location? What is the time type, worker type, difficulty to fill, uh, the job profile summary, the job description, the job family. Now I will come back and explain the job family, job profile later. Uh, once we discuss, uh, once we go, once we hire one employee and uh, one employee in position management and see some of those details here, uh, we will get into this job profile, job family things, okay? Uh, for now, let me see if we have a job profile called as Workday Consultant. 
I will just use one of the existing job profiles called Workday Consultant. So uh, some of these details that you see here, it will automatically be uh, it will automatically come from the job profile, and this is the job profile that I'm using. I will show you how to create these job profiles later, but for now, just understand. Okay, this is the job profile uh, that is being used, and there are a lot of other things that you can define at the job profile level. We'll get back to this discussion later. Mm -hmm.